So I just wanted to welcome everyone. We're going to get the presentation started in just a moment. Uh, and thank you all for turning out. I just wanted to give a brief introduction to our architects over here, Kuhn Riddle Architects. Uh, they're Pioneer Valley based. In fact, Karen, the senior interior designer over there is from Deerfield, so you may have seen her around. Um, I think they've done a great job with this um, design, and you're going to get to take a look at it. It's for the 1888 building, which, of course, is 67 Main Street over there, just corner of North Main and Conway Street. Um, they're just going to walk us through some concepts. At the end of the presentation, we're going to have a little Q&A. Uh, during that Q&A, feel free to just stand up in the audience. We'll call on you. You can just speak your question, and then I'm going to repeat your question back from the mic just so everyone knows what the question was. I would ask that you stick to just one question and then let someone else have a turn before you stand back up, <laughs> just so everyone gets an opportunity to, to ask their questions. Um, if you know someone who wasn't able to attend tonight who would have liked to attend, there's good news. There is a second one of these meetings coming up in early October, and that will be before the October 7th special town meeting uh, when this project will actually be on the warrant for town meeting voters to, to decide on. Um, so beyond that, um, just please let us know if you're having any difficulty hearing or anything like that, and we'll try to accommodate you. Um, and otherwise, enjoy the presentation from Charles and, and uh, Karen from Kuhn Riddle Architects. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Um, this has been a really exciting project that Karen and I have had a lot of fun working with for the last, for the last several months. And in a lot of ways, it's kind of two projects. It's the... It's it's kind of it's 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 really like two projects. It's the it's the adaptive reuse of the 1888 building, and then it is in addition to that building, which provides full accessibility to the 1888 building, as well as um, additional um, town administrative offices, a public meeting room, and so it's 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 doing a lot of things all at once as as two projects. Um, we have some images up on here just to sort of remind us of the past. Buttons right here. Here we go. <laughs> now that, now's that working? Okay, yeah. Um, so these are just some arch archival images, uh, photographs, and postcards. Just a sort of a reminder of of uh, the memory of this building and it's been on the corner for well since 1888 really and it's been several incarnations it was a, it was an elementary school it's it's been a senior center um, it hasn't really been used actively since the senior center i believe a number of years ago but it really has a, a proud place on the on the corner here and and uh, and this is a, an opportunity to breathe new life into it and let it live for another you know 50 50 years hopefully at least maybe 100 um, So some, some nice images. Um, uh, Karen was, was great. She actually drove to Boston to the, uh, to the Archive Center for the State and was able to dig up one of these original drawings. This was actually not the building as it was constructed, but it was a design iteration along the way of the, uh, of the North Main Street facade. And uh, you know this is, this is an actual blueprint, so it's, it's fun to look at and sort of realize that even, you know, architects were always going through iterations and they're always looking at different versions of buildings and this was an earlier one of this particular building. Um, the, uh, the overall scope, I'm going to have to come around here so I can read. So this, this, these first series of slides I'm very adept at this, as you can see. Um, these, these first series of slides summarize the work within the 1888 building, because it is expansive, what we're doing there. We're, we're basically doing a full gut renovation of the building. Um, we're demoing all the existing first and uh, second floor uh, partitions, all the interior finishes and the stairs. We're removing all the existing mechanical equipment, lighting, plumbing, everything's coming out of the building. We're, uh, we're taking out all the, uh, the basement partitions and the slab as well. There's a lot of mold and fungus built up in the basement, as, as folks probably know. And we're going to be, um, we're going to be dehumidifying the basement, pouring a new slab down in there and, and controlling the moisture through, uh, through sumps. And so 
get demoing that the basement is a really important part of of, that, of all that scope for making the the, the basement a more um, uh, healthy space. We are going to be replacing all of the windows and doors on the exterior of the building with historically appropriate windows that will be high energy performance, airtight, you know, attractive. Um, probably aluminum clad windows on the exterior with a wood sash, very durable, durable window type. Um, uh, and we're gonna, what, we're, what we're hoping to do is save all that existing wood molding that is currently framing the building the windows right now, which are really what give them so much character. And so we're going to save that, restore it, and the new replacement windows will fit into that molding. Okay. Um, the interior fit out, um, all new interior partitions and doors. So Karen's going to walk you through the plans. It's really kind of exciting what we got, what's, what's going on in there. So it's all new finishes, doors. Um, uh, bathrooms, um, full accessibility by virtue of the elevator in the addition, um, uh, mechanicals, all new mechanical equipment. We're doing uh, um, air source heat pumps, which will so all electric um, me mechanical systems, which will which will uh, which will um, serve both the 1888 building and the addition as well. The addition has PV on it to help offset some of the electrical costs of the electrical. Um, mechanical systems. There'll be uh, heat recovery ventilation, so um, energy efficient fresh air brought into the building at all times, both the in both the addition and the uh, the 1888 building itself. The building's not sprinklered right now, but we'll be putting um, fire sprinklers throughout the entire building and uh, dehumidification in the basement as well. Okay. Um, the building's in pretty good shape structurally. It's, it's actually it's in excellent shape. And uh, the one thing we, we have to do is, is uh, seismically brace the building by tying the floor diaphragms into the exterior masonry walls with mechanical fasteners. So that's one of the one of the structural elements we'll be dealing with in the existing building. Um, in the thermal for the thermal envelope, um, as I said, in the interior of the building, we're going to um, bring all the finishes down to the existing brick and then put um, rigid, um, rigid foam insulation, a couple inches of that, and then new finished wall board all around the interior of the, uh, of the exterior walls. And then the, uh, the existing basement slab, as I said, is going to be removed and we'll, we'll have a, a drainage sump around the perimeter of the basement to a pump off, off, set off to the side. Um, the slate roof is in, is in generally good condition. We actually had a roofer come up and look at it. Um, there's some miscellaneous slates that need to be replaced. Uh, he recommended replacing the hip and ridge caps as well as the valley flashing. We're also going to install new gutters to channel water away from the 1888 building and into the, the town storm drain system. Um, the exterior masonry, um, there was, a, there was a, a masonry report done by this group called WSP. It's, it's very thorough, and um, we've, given that, uh, we've given that over into the project, and we're going to be restoring, basically tearing all the wheat, tearing all the, the, uh, the organic growth off the building, fixing the cracked masonry. There's some, there's some uh, precast and, and stone windowsills that need to be, need to be um, refurbished, but, but uh, the, the, the masonry is actually not in bad shape. There is lead, asbestos, and, and mold and fungus identified in the building, um, and that will all be a bit thoroughly abated throughout the process of demolition. Um, so this is, a, this is a conceptual site plan, just to get oriented. We're in this building right here. Um, this is the police station. Here's the 1888 building right here, and our addition is here off to the west in back of this building um, with a with a conceptual parking diagram running around the building this way. Um, this right now, this site plan is, is, is in progress because we're thinking about a master plan for this entire campus, which is going to include the police station, the future senior center, um, and the library. So th this is, this is a, an example of a site plan that works as kind of a standalone piece for this building, but this is going to be in development as we, as we move forward with the project. Um, the thought about putting the, the addition here on the back of the building is that it's not apparent from the street, so it doesn't really doesn't change the, 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 the view of the 1888 building at all from, from the, the, the North Main Street um, approach. And it, uh, it creates an, an area back in here for, for um, easy accessible parking into the main entrance of the, uh, of the addition. Um, and Karen will go into that in more detail as she walks you through the plans. Any questions so far? 
Yes. It's a it's a stone rubble foundation. It's uh, it's not in bad shape, um, but um, it, 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 there is there is moisture. Some moisture does weep through, which is why it's going to be important to control the humidity down there. And that's the purpose around the uh, the you know the, the drain and the sump and that. Oh, are we going to do anything to mitigate the ancient stone foundations? Well, the foundations aren't 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 that bad actually. They're structurally sound. So, um, you know, and, and as we get further into this, you know, obviously through through design development and and construction documents, things always come up, and we will we'll be looking at all of that. But it, from where we are right now at this point, the foundations are in pretty good shape. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. All right, um, so this is a floor plan of the first floor of the building. And so this is Conway Street. Is this better? You really gotta hold it close. This is Conway Street here. North Main Street is on this side. This is a front entry that's um, entry portico that's on North Main Street. And um, the portico on, and on the south side is on Conway Street. Those will remain in place. Um, so this is the 1888 building here, and this is the addition here, and it's connected by what we're calling a bridge. It's kind of a, a suspended connector, and we'll, we'll show you that in the renderings. It's very pretty. So the new entrance to the building is going to be through the addition because, as you know, the first floor of the 1888 building is um, it's about a half a, half, half a flight off the ground level, so you know, part of the challenge is getting people up to that level. So the elevator is in... Oops. The addition. <laughs> Your Zoom meeting ended. <laughs> a while ago. Oh, okay. Okay, so your main entrance to the building will be down here. And you'll come into this first floor of the addition um, with a lobby in your elevator, half a flight of stairs up to that first level of the 1888 building. And also strategically planned here is this meeting space, which will take place of a room like this. It seats about 49 people, or 49 people max. Um, so that'll be a great space for these type of meetings with great acoustics and... <laughs> Um, and, and easy in and out for people. There's back door, you know, when meetings are dispersing, people can go out the back, they can go out the front. So when you're going to go into the building to do your business, pay your taxes or whatever, you can go up the elevator, half a flight, or you can take the stair and cross this connector into the 1888 building, which is glass on both sides, so it's kind of a, a cool... Um, walkway because you're walking you're, you're kind of approaching the building and you're seeing the facade of the 1888 building kind of up, po up close and personal it's really pretty and you can see right into the building it, it feels like you know it might be like a little rat's maze but it's it's very small it's not a huge building either one of them so it's a very easy wayfinding so once you get up here you can see right through to where the service windows are so um, this like the pink areas are kind of circulation space for public so when you come through it's pretty much just these halls right here that people are going to be, you're going to be going to, to like do your business. And so straight ahead is the treasurer and the clerk's um, service windows, and there's also the assessor's windows up here. Um, these walls here are kind of prime spots for displays or like public information boards, and they're the same on the upper level. We'd like to use one of those for like some kind of historical display of, you know, kind of celebrating the 1888 building and maybe have some. Um, pieces that you know we can salvage from the building and just kind of celebrate the history of the building. Um, and so this they have this whole section here is the clerk suite, um, and the green is the assessor suite. And then up here is a conference room that's shared. We have a lot of shared spaces that we um, try to maximize um, every square inch of this building and kind of get everything to fit in. And it really means that people have to share spaces and kind of you know rethink how they how they do business and have dual purposes to spaces. Um, so also I wanted to point out this, the front door of the building is, is really pretty and you don't really notice it much now. It's got a beautiful arched um, transom over it. And you hardly even see it from the exterior because the portico is so kind of big and bulky and you don't see it unless you're almost going up the stairs. And on the inside, it's like in this little vestibule. So it doesn't really, you don't experience it very much. But now we've kind of opened it up so you can actually see it 
from when you're crossing this connector, you know, looking right through these windows, you can actually see that window. So it's kind of kind of neat to experience some of that um, historical architecture and building. Um, so we've got. It's not. It's not. It's just going to be like emergency egress only. Uh, he asked if that was going to be used at all, the front entry door. It's, it's just going to be an emergency egress. Um, we do have egress here and here. So we, want, we needed to kind of capture that for, for program space. Um, we've got a, a core of bathrooms here that will kind of serve this public uh, meeting space. So when you come in for a meeting at night or whatever, you can kind of use the bathrooms downstairs. And um, you can go out here or here or out that way. Uh, I think that's it for the first floor. Sure. Um, let's see, it's 681 square feet. She's asking how large that meeting space is and how does it compare to the space that we're in right now. 680 square feet. <laughs> It's probably a little smaller. It's, it's, it, would, it, will, it will seat comfortably about the same number of people that are in this room right now yeah. with a presentation table without right. the space. Perhaps. Right. But, but yeah. it's, it has windows on three sides, so it's very light and open. Yeah. yeah. We'll go to the other floor. Next. Next. So this is the second floor. Um, you can reach the second floor either by from the first lobby. You can take the elevator up, or you can take the stairs, or you can take these stairs. We've got two sets of stairs. Um, so in the new addition, we have the um, select board suite in the administrator office. And then as you cross the bridge, or the suspended bridge or the connector, um, it's kind of the same kind of setup. You've got your public, immediate, your public spaces, circulation spaces, and, and pink, so it's pretty clear where to find things, services. So straight ahead is inspection services. So you get all the inspectors, you have the health, um, the health inspector, the building commissioner, or town planner, they're all kind of in their suite. Um, and then this is a little bit kind of back of house up here, I would say. Um, there's a conference room right near inspection so that if you need to lay out plans with them, they can kind of use that space or other people can use it and they can just schedule it as needed. Um, in the corner is, we're kind of calling it hotel flex space because we do have some people that don't have a full-time office. They maybe work part-time or they work remotely, but they do sometimes need to come in maybe with a laptop and just need a place to perch for the day. So those can be shared and scheduled as well. And that's, you know, we kind of, we'll figure that out as we get further down the road, but um, it's kind of a nice flex space because we do have a lot of people to kind of accommodate in this, in this building. Um, and then we have a break, break room because we've got, uh, you know, about 20 plus people so there's a break room and then bathrooms upstairs as well. Um, I think that's it. Unless anybody has questions on the second floor. Yes. The town safe. The town safe is on the first floor in the uh, clerk's. Um, we have a vault right here in the town clerk suite. Is that what you meant? Yep. Right, and that'll be fire rated, and we're gonna we're gonna reinforce the structure underneath it. Um, to, to carry the loads and what's in there, so that, and, and it will be sprinklered, so yep. it'll be a true here. a true vault. Yep. Does yep. It have powered shades. Yes, yeah, so we'll definitely have. There'll definitely be some type of window treatment. We'll need that for sure. Yes. Storage for files. Or <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Uh, it's one that we are all working on. Um, there's been talk of possibly digitizing a lot of files. Um, there's a, um, there's a, there is a lot of files in the, in the existing space. We do have some accommodated for. We have quite a few accommodated for in the offices, but um, there are some pieces to figure out on that, to be honest. Yep. Sure, and I think I was remiss previously. I didn't introduce myself. I'm Christopher Dunn. I'm the town planner. Um, 
so first of all, I believe there's some storage in the basement, correct? There's a little bit in there. So there's some storage in the basement. Um, you know, the attic in this scenario is mothballed, essentially. I don't know if it's possible to store anything up there. Um, we are definitely trying to move towards digitization because all of, you know, every municipality has this issue where we just have far too many paper files that no one ever looks at. Um, but it's, it's true. It's a challenge. It is something we're going to have to figure out. Um, fortunately, you know, you construct this building, offices move in there. This building still exists for the time being. Um, so we do have a little extra time to actually figure out, okay, where do these files ultimately live? But it's, it's a great question. So do you mean the files that are with... That, yeah, sorry. The, the question was about... I'm just sorry. I'm just clarifying the question. So uh, files that are at PVMA and Eagle Brook that are town-owned. Yeah. So, yeah, they were in the basement of the 1888 building, and then through an agreement, they were moved up there, right? Yeah. Yeah, so those would remain paper. Um, you know, we're not trying to, you know, microfilm them or anything like that. So, yeah, the question is, where is the server closet located? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. We'll do this last question. He'd asked about server space and IT. So we do have a pretty large server closet here, and then the basement as well can be used for equipment. Yep. Here next. All right. Thanks, Karen. So th these are the, the technical building elevation drawings. We have some renderings we're going to show a little bit later that, s that show some of the color and, and, and a little more the three-dimensionality of the building. But this is the Conway Street elevation. So this is the south elevation. This is the 1888 building. This is our addition here. This is the connector bridge that Karen was referring to that's, that's very glassy. It does a couple of nice things. It visually, it separates the addition from the, from the existing building. It, it allows accessibility and passage between the two buildings, but it very minimally impacts the 1888 building, which is great for structural reasons, cost reasons, and also aesthetic reasons, because we're not trying to glom onto this building with something. We're respecting it. We're stepping back from it, and at the same time, creating a, a, a sort of a, of, a, of a dynamic transition as you go from the addition into the, into the existing building. Um, the uh, the form of the existing building. We're kind of looking at the new, the traditional New England meeting house and thinking about how that's a very simple, pure building in terms of its materials, in terms of its detailing, and in, and it doesn't really it doesn't compete with with the beautiful detailing and the kind of Queen Victor Queen Anne Victorian nature of the uh, of the 1888 building. And so and so it's, it's it seemed like a language that could be adapted and transformed for our addition in a way that would be appropriate, you know, for for Deerfield and for the 1888 building, as opposed to doing something overtly modern and, and flat roofed. And it just it's, it just felt like the right the right approach to take for this project. Um, and then uh, it, it, we're, we're, we're working with the 1888 building in terms of its, of, of its, the, its, its massing, its, its, its size, the way windows are distributed throughout the, throughout the 1888 building kind of we, was something that we took our cues from with this in terms of uh, sizes of windows, spacing, the idea of articulating this corner, which is the main entry into the building from the, uh, from the southwest, kind of echoing and balancing what's happening here on the public classroom side of the 1888 building. So there's a nice kind of balance happening between um, sort of um, compositionally between, between the addition and the 1888 building. This is, this is the, the side of the building that would actually face 1888. So not a lot of windows. There's going to be some mechanical equipment down in the alley. So we don't want to we don't want uh, you know a lot of windows looking out on that. This is the connector bridge piece that brings you into uh, into the 1888 building. 
This is the, uh, the North Main Street side. So as you can see, there is no addition at all apparent from North Main Street. Um, this, this would be the, uh, the north elevation. Uh, so again, just a lot of the same comments I made about, about sort of balance and a form between the addition and the, uh, and the 1888 building. This would be a little back door into the meeting room from the, from the parking area. Um, the bridge, again, connecting through to the 1888 building. And as Karen mentioned, as you move through this glassy um, connector piece, You'll be moving right past the existing brick and and and, and the brick detailing, and you'll really you know, like like yeah, like as she says, you'll have a up close personal kind of experience as you're walking through there and, and getting that sense of history. Um, this is the west elevation, so this is the entry corner that brings you in from the parking area. Um, there's a, a, a two-sided porch that kind of wraps around the building to sort of create a sense of entrance and also because of all those you know impromptu conversations you have after public meetings where people spill out and it's raining and you want to be undercover it's a place you can be and uh, and have those kind of conversations um, so this would be the uh, the view from the uh, uh, from the southwest as you're looking in towards towards the uh, the entrance into the new addition we're creating a plaza out here with benches and planting and bike racks so and so as you move out of the out of the common out of the meeting room into the hallway under the porch you know into this area and then and then you know either to walk either walk home on the sidewalks or come and get your vehicle there's a sense of like welcoming layers as you as you exit or enter the building um, this again this is that the articulation articulation of that corner kind of letting the building itself be white and and the uh, the classic sort of new england meeting house details articulating the white portion of the building and then the corner being glassy and sort of highlighted in this gray color. Just an aerial version to give you a little more sense of how that's gonna feel and the scale of it. Um, again, just looking at the, the balance and proportion between the addition and the 1888 building and how they're, they're working with each other. This gives you a nice sense of the transparent sort of bridge connector piece between the two buildings. You'll get to see people passing back and forth. It'll be lit up at night and so it'll be very nice. And this is a view from North Main Street, again, just accentuating the fact that the addition's not at all visible. And this is just a, a, a view from the north, looking towards the existing parking area, and then our building sort of poking out and back here. Um, do you want to talk about these? All right, I'll keep going. So this is as you come in as you come in the front door um, from from the entrance lobby. This is the this is the elevator. We're going to kind of wrap this in wood and give it a nice warm feeling. It's it's not going to feel like an institutional elevator. It'll it'll, it'll have it'll sort of evoke a certain a, a certain kind of you know warmth and 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 historic quality. You'll have these views into the uh, into the meeting room, and these are the stairs that bring you up into the 1888 building views of the facade and windows of the 1888 building beyond. Um, this is a view from the meeting room. So this kind of, this gives you a little bit of a sense of the, of the proportion and, and size of it. Again, I think this, this group of chairs is kind of equal to what we have in here. Same order of magnitude anyway. It's about 49 people, which is probably close to what we have in here. And then uh, it'll have a nice trade ceiling. Mechanical equipment will run around inside these, inside these soffits and distribute uh, fresh air and conditioned air. Um, and then, yeah, this would be the, uh, the, the greeting counter for the, the clerk's office, as Karen was mentioning. So as you're coming through the connector, you come into this space. There is the, uh, the assessor's office here, a little, a little um, information um, uh, station here with a laptop for accessing um, town records, and then the view through, through, the, uh, through the assessor's office, and this is that, that door Karen was mentioning before that kind of gets reclaimed and becomes a, a highlight of the space. And is, that, is that it? That's it, so now we can formally take questions. Yes. There's roughly 5,000 in the 1888 building and about 2,600 in the addition. That that's um that's gross square footage. That's including exterior walls, but those are 
rough numbers. Yeah. Yep. Yes. We're not seeking any leads. Oh, yeah, so are we seeking any kind of uh, lead certification for the project? We're not, actually, for this project. Um, we will be... Is, is, we will be building this, you know, two two code. I think I think um, I'm not sure, but I think uh, Deerfield is a is an opt in town for the energy code. So the, the 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 building building to the current levels of code is 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 very significant. And the lead certification, it's it's um it, while it's important and it's really it's done a great job in terms of getting the conversation started about sustainable building and building practices. Um, it's something we're not pursuing in this particular project because it is time time consuming and expensive. Yes. How old is the uh, slate roof that's there? I think it's the original roof. So it's hundred and fifty. In back. Is this a, is is this as asbestos removal on the third floor? You're saying you're asking. There is asbestos in the overall building that will be removed. It's, it's mostly in the floor tiles and some of the plaster, but it's 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 limited mostly to the first and second floors, and that'll be fully abated. Well, there actually isn't any asbestos up on the third floor, according to the reports that we've been looking at. And so, we're, well, there, yeah, there really is only a roof hatch to the third floor right now. And so we're, gonna, we're, we're actually going to build a new, safer, accessible roof hatch to get you up in there because you need fire access up in there. There will be a dry sprinkler system up there, so, but there's not going to be any new construction work happening up there. Other than other than other than providing safe safe access and fire sprinklers, does it have to be the addition? Does the building have to be white? Um, it does for now. <laughs> you know, everything everything's open for discussion. You know, everything's everything's in negotiation. I like the white because it it harkens back to the to the, the traditional New England kind of meeting house, and and I think it balances the 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 richness of the masonry really nice. And and any other color would, I think, detract from the 1888 building. In my in my opinion, yes. Painting a, a brick color. Yeah. I, I, again, I think that that if you if you painted it brick, you'd lose the articulation of the form and the brickwork on the existing building in a way. I understand the the instinct to do that, but you know it's something we thought about actually. But then uh, yeah, and actually the historic commission looks for distinct contrasts in new in what you're doing new with the existing building, and that's a good point. And uh, and so it's 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 adhering to that sort of general sort of principle. Okay. Um, yes, you, you put... Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Well, those are interesting comments. I mean, yeah, the the aesthetics of architecture and 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 buildings and 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 what we do and the choices we make are are, are so varied and 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 then you know. You're, 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 what you're saying has a lot of validity, and and we when we when we're thinking about a project from you know from start to finish, we go through all these thought processes, and we wind up in a certain place. And they're actually in, in just getting to the window trim. If you come up in here, there actually is really rich detail around these windows. They're not just sort of punched openings, and and uh, so we we were thinking about the detailing of the openings. Um, uh, the idea about the roof line is actually not trying to o to overtly mimic the roof line, but to complement it with a, with a roof line that runs sort of perpendicular to it. And so we go through these conversations with ourselves, and we can certainly look at different types of colors if that was something that that, that might that people would be interested in seeing. Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> Right. And to bring the energy, the center of it, not having everything face the street, because that disperses energy, right? So is it possible to get your veranda thing towards the center of the green space instead of orienting the entryway to the street as much? And then there's a big parking lot back there, right, that you can use for the handicap. Right. Right, so the question is, is it possible to think about reorienting this building more to the middle of the site than, than towards the street? That's an that's a interesting question, because that's exactly where we started. So our, 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 first, our first instinct was to do exactly that and have the, have the entrance oriented in this direction to the west. Um, well, if, to, if, you, if, you did it, if you did it to the north, I mean, there is parking here, but there's also, there, there, it's, it's very likely there's going to be parking along in here, and it brings you uh, into, you know, accessible parking here close to the entrance. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really goofing things up here. What do I do? Oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. I was trying to blow it up a little bit. Um, and... There's there's so many there's so many reasons why we, I keep saying there's a lot of reasons because there are a lot of reasons why we wind up where where we wound up. We looked at north entrances. North entrances are always tough anyway because they're dark, they're cold, they freeze up in the winter. Having an entrance on the south or on the west side is much more welcoming. It's sunny. It's you're not you're not dealing with the same kind of environmental sort of issues that way. Um, Entering in, entering in at this end of the building also just worked from a plan perspective in terms of integrating this building, its program, and circulation into the into the existing building. Coming in from the north would have created uh, a whole series of challenges about having to create more circulation through the building to get into that building and into the 1888 building. And so, for for a number of reasons, we wound up with the entrance down here on the west side, and then it just seemed like a logical thing because Conway Street is is sort of the address in a lot of ways of, of these of this of this municipal campus to make to make a a nod to a nod to uh, Conway Street with with the entrance here sort of wrapping around, and so. It, it, it just feels like the, the, the energy and force and, and the energy of the site kind of wants to be sort of in this direction from the parking, in terms of view, in terms of access from Conway Street. So, right. Okay, sure. Um, back, back there, please. Right. I I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I would be making something up, but uh, it it it's it's enough to at least power you know some lights and and it helps offset some of the carbon from the grid and it's and it's uh, it's the it's the right thing to do. So we're we're making accommodations for that. Yes.
Okay. No, that yeah, yeah. Thanks for mentioning that. Uh, so there is a sidewalk along in here. There would be a curb. Um, there would there would be you know an an an, an access an accessible curb for, for you know for wheelchair access into the building. But you know there there <laughs> sorry there there is um. I don't dare touch it. There, there, there. I, th I think this is like a 15 foot width. In this, this terrace plaza here. So there is, there is room, and um, and uh, you know we we depending on what happens with the site plan, we could look at introducing a little bit more of a green strip in here to to pull this. I, okay, yeah, <laughs> Chris. Yeah, yeah, it'd be you know your typical four to six inch curb. In back. So the, the comment was, how about some shingles, maybe, or, or a green or a brown color? And right. OK, well, we so. Yeah, I mean, I mean, there there are there are a lot of different kind of shades of white we could we could look at, and and yeah, the screen the screen is harsh. I mean, this kind of just sort of jumps out at you as this like glaring color, right? And uh, and so you know, I'm, we're 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 hearing we're hearing thoughts about the color, and we can we can look at that more. Yes, and also in back. Right, so I guess I think the comment was to talk about about how for historic approval, which we which we are going for um, USDA funding, which does require historic review. Um, they they like the, the reviewing agencies like to see a, a distinct difference between the historic building and 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 what's new, and and uh, is it is that the yeah and and so that. You know, I think that's clearly what we're trying to do here. We're not trying to mimic the existing building. We're not. We're not. We're, we're not trying to say that our building looks historic. You know, we're, we're trying to come up with an architecture that feels that feels very much of this time, but also of Deerfield and and what and what we see around here with, you know, you know, historic wood frame construction. Um, yes. Well, so it's a it's a vertical V groove siding, and so which is which is very yes. Oh, it's a vertical it's a vertical V groove siding, and then uh, it has a, it has nice thick trim um, for the uh, articulating the the eaves the the eave returns along in here, then the window trim, and uh, and so uh, yeah, that's that was that's what the material is. Yeah, and then this gray area here would actually be a horizontal clabbered sort of a building to contrast with the with the uh, with the vertical siding. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, 
I'm on the Tim Hill Chief Select Board member. I'm on the building committee that's looking at this. These are the first concepts, so I want to make it clear that we're taking in your information. Some people don't like the white. Some people do like the white. Some people would like to see clabbards. If the project's approved, there's going to be a design phase where all of these things will be looked at again with people coming and giving us input. So this is what Charles, Charles has envisioned, and I think the white was, like you see, this is a big block of white, the church building. That's because it's easy to see on the screen. So um, there's no unanimity that this is going to be the final color of the building. So this is just, uh, just something that obviously the architects have to work with the town and come up with what we all agree is going to be appropriate. So I just wanted to share that. Thanks, Tim. We're not, we're not completely dogmatic, uh, you know, so, uh, yes. Yeah, that, that's a, that's a good point. I mean, these are these these sort of they're they're abstractions in in the sense that they're taking the this design and they're 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 pulling it out and you're seeing only this and you're not seeing it in context. We we try to give some some sense of like the massing of the church and and you know behind and, and or what's going to be the senior center. But you know that that's a good point and uh, it it does help to imagine. The overall, the overall effect of, of the campus, and that we're creating context that somebody else is going to have to respond to. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, that's that, that's good clarification. So, this is not the future senior center. <laughs> It, it, it may provide some senior services. Steve. Well, what is your intent for refurbishing the brick on the outside of the original Well, um, as... Well, we, we pull all the, um, all the all the weeds and vines off of it. Um, then there is there is some there's some repointing that has to happen where where the, where the pointing is, is is fading. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of make cracking in the masonry. There's a little bit that's been identified that will be that will be repaired. We're working with our our, our structural engineer is, is is pretty adept at historic masonry restoration. They know how to formulate the grouts so they're so that they're historically correct and they expand and contract in the right amounts uh, to be. To, to be a, we're not. It, it, yeah, the the church doesn't have to be. Well, no, we don't want to sandblast the the building, but we do want to re. We well, well, you have to color match to the extent that you can, and you have to use the right the right the right kinds of grouts, and and it's 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 not going to look like it's. It's not. It's not going to look like a, a brand new brick building. That'll look like you know a building that's 150 years old and has been sort of lovingly taken care of. Yes. Pardon me. Uh, right now, we're we're specifying this product called boral, which is a which is a composite fly ash material. It works. It, it handles like wood. It uh, carpenters love it. It's uh, it's it's it has a it's incredibly durable. It doesn't crack, check, fade. It holds paint really well. So it's a it's a really great material, and it looks and feels like wood. Yes. Where the I'll let, I'll let Chris I'll let, I'll let Chris come to the rescue on this one. Yeah, sure. Uh, so back in 2020, the Town Building Advisory Committee (TBAC), uh, which is headed by Julie Chalfant, who is you know on our Finance Committee as well, 
um, undertook a series of building condition assessments, and that included this building, 1888, um, and a few other facilities for the town. Um, the conclusion for this building was that it really wasn't well suited to municipal offices. Obviously, this meeting space has challenges. As everyone knows, the sound tends to get sucked up in this big high cathedral ceiling. Um, but more importantly, um, you know, I think this is really about consolidating town facilities, historic preservation, um, and making you know, one town facility space that's ADA accessible. This building is um, you know, not complete, completely in compliance with the ADA, uh, and so that's a challenge, and so there would need to be some modifications to it to bring it into compliance. And rather than go through that process, you got a brand new building with a, a, an elevator that, takes, uh, that makes a historic building um, compliant. Well, no, no, sorry, the, the addition is brand new, which is where the elevator would be located. Um, another question? That's a great question. Uh, and <laughs> sure, yeah. I, yeah, sure. I'd be happy to speak to it. So, obviously, at this point, the question was, you know, what happens to this building that we're in right now? At this point, we don't know. Um, you know, we, that's not, that hasn't been determined yet. I can say that back in 2023, um, you know, the Connecting Communities uh, initiative, CCI, got grant money to do a study of what this would look like if this was housing here rather than this building. Um, so we do have some renderings and some concepts around, you know, what would happen if this was, say, senior housing or something like that. Um, but none of that obviously has moved forward yet. That's just one idea that's out there. Um, and certainly in that case, you know, if it was senior housing, you would probably turn the land over to a developer, and so it would be you know, privately owned land, and they would develop the, the housing. But again, one idea among many, so I'll just say, I'll leave it at that. The police are going to stay, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, MA is bringing up another finding from that 2020 facility condition assessment was just this is not an energy efficient building in any way, shape, or form. Um, and so hopefully, you know, uh, with the changes that Kean Riddle is proposing to the 1888 building and the new addition, you would have a space that's a lot more energy efficient. Any other questions? Uh, look at this guy. Oh, you want a Pam? <laughs> Pam, you want to? <laughs> Yes, so the, the comment was, uh, one, love the bike rack out front, and two, um, you know, we'd love to see some sidewalks that are a little bit better delineated and make it clear where people need to go in order to get into the building. Sounds like that was the comment. And I can say, um, you know, that the space around the building is not necessarily part of this project, but it's something we have an eye on. We'd love to have a better streetscape uh, for the municipal campus, certainly. Other questions? Uh, so the question is, for paved parking areas, have we considered permeable pavement? Um, you know, certainly the, the town now has kind of a history of considering it. The Leary lot, you know, just uh, next door pretty much is going to be uh, permeable pavement. Um, again, this, is, this project is separate from the, the kind of surrounding site work, but that's something we'll certainly look at. 
um, and consider. Yep. Way in the back. <laughs> well, uh, so the question was, uh, if the congregational church is just providing senior services, where does the senior center go? Um, and that is the subject of an ongoing study. Um, so we've actually got a grant of $75,000 to look into that very question, and a few different sites are being considered, including that 1821 congregational church. Yes. Charles, you want to step up to the mic and answer that one? <laughs> Dan, do you want to do you want to add some backup here? <laughs> but we, we there there is an overall budget, overall project budget of eight point seven million dollars, and uh, and Dan here has been doing a lot of work, sort of breaking down. Um, where all the where all the different sort of cost um, allocations are going to go in terms of design fees, construction fees, and um, and everything else. Give me a second. And by the way, folks, this is Dan Pallada. He's with P3, so he's our owner's project manager on the project. So. Any project over $1.5 million in Massachusetts, you've got to have one of these guys. And uh, fortunately, we have Dan, and he's helping us out with uh, you know, the overall planning and construction management of the project. So, sorry about that. Uh, the, the, actual, the actual construction is just under $7 million. For the purposes of tonight, we've you know, rounded it to $7 million. The overall project budget is $8.7 million. Um, the division of the costs between the two buildings are roughly, uh, roughly about four and a half of the uh, existing building and the balance on the new building. Uh, the new building having all of the utility upgrades, the elevators, the stairs, et cetera. So, I mean, I, I, I can't pull, for some reason, I can't pull up the exact numbers, but I'd be happy to get you, you know, the exact estimates and everything. So we had an independent estimator look at the concept drawings so that, you know, we weren't, we weren't throwing numbers out there. So there was an independent estimate dividing it between uh, the historic numbers and the non-historic numbers because we, we want to make sure that monies that are allocated under the Massachusetts uh, General Laws, VIA, the CPA, are segregated. So we've, we've done everything in two buckets. Does that answer your question? All, all in, it's, 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 it's about that. So, unfortunately, construct, public construction in Massachusetts is very expensive. And it's, it's expensive in the valley, too. It's not cheaper out in western Mass than eastern Mass like it used to be. Um, we have a severe shortage of labor. And, and, you know, these are the numbers that we're expecting, and we're not going to, you know, Pretend that they're not. This is what, this is what we're expecting. I, yeah, and I, I just recently finished a project in in North Amherst, the North Amherst Library Edition, and that came in right at around that same number. So it's not it's not a huge surprise. And so, uh, well, I have up. Sorry about that. Um, so, one thing I want to remind people: so we've had various discussions about how much it would cost to retrofit this building. One million, two million, unclear how much million. Um, all of that money, if we were to retrofit this building, it doesn't qualify for CPA funds, which we already have in the bank for historic preservation projects. Any work that we do on this building, on this building here, we would have to raise your real estate taxes to pay for it. We have the money in the bank, CPA money to do the historic preservation part of this, 
and that even includes building an ADA-compliant accessible elevator in the new building. We have a $4 million grant from the federal government that will go away if we don't do this project, so we'll end up with an empty building, a, and a, a building that's going to cost us a lot of money to repair if we decide to fix this building, and we've, the Town Building Advisory Committee has said this building is really not where you want to sink two or three million dollars. So I just want to leave that thought in your minds when you're thinking about this project. We can pay for this whole project, even if it is a thousand a square foot, without borrowing money. Otherwise, if we do something in this building, we're going to borrow money. We're going to add to your real estate taxes. So I just want you to think about that. Yeah, they. We wanted you to get yeah, So yes, you're correct. Um, we raised the money that we'd be spending on this building through about 15 years of money building up in the bank. About 74 to 78 percent of that money that's in the bank that will pay for this project is state matching funds. So the breakdown of actual spending here is 70 percent federal and state money that were taxes taken away from us at one point. And now we're taking back, you know, $4 million plus of federal money that we wouldn't have to spend if we were going to fix this building. And so it's about a 70-30 split between local money and federal and state money. So. Thanks, Tim. It uh, looks like Kathy's got a question. Right, so Kathy was just underlining that, you know, if we adaptively reuse the 1888 building, you know, we could save that building, not let it rot, and have another blighted property uh, on our main street. So, point well taken. Uh, Pam? So the question or comment was about using uh, this this space that we're currently in as potentially additional space for the police department. Um, again, you know, whatever happens here hasn't been determined yet. Um, and I, personally, I actually haven't heard the chief voice that, but it's possible that at some point it was said. So, but still a question mark. And uh, Dan's coming up to add to that answer, I believe. <laughs> The police department has a need for Sally Port, which is essentially an enclosed space. And that's why this area here is left white, not green, not parking. Because conceptually, we want to make sure we were not going to be in the way of any future plans for the police station, whether it's five years, 10 years, 15 years, whenever you can do it. We want to make sure you had that ability. Thanks, Dan. Any other questions? Right, so the comment was just that if the 1888 building is not ultimately used in some fashion and not preserved, it does rot, then we'd have to demolish it and pay for that. Uh, gentleman in the back there. I guess I'll take that as a rhetorical question. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the yeah the comment is you know why don't we just put the building on the market 
Um, you know, I, I can, st what I can speak to is that, you know, when we did our master plan many years ago at this point, one of the major values that people expressed in there was historic preservation. I think that's the, one of the only buildings, maybe the only building in South Deerfield that's actually inventoried as a historic asset. Um, so it's a, it's a significant asset and I think probably most people would feel handing it off to someone else. Uh, they might have some trepidation about that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Denise? Just one comment. I think that, that Mr. Thompson was so important for really hard to access the $4 million in federal funds. And if we give that back, do you think our legislators are ever going to let that money go? That's the guarantee. Sure. Yeah, well, the comment was just that, um, you know, we have a $4 million dollar uh, federal grant um, that that Tim Hilchey and the select board managed to get, um, and the concern is if we don't use that on this project, then it'll be pretty difficult to go back and get additional earmarks in the future. So, point well taken. Any other comments uh, in the back there? Right, so the CPC back in August at their last meeting voted to uh, recommend this project to, to town meeting, um, and that included the $3.8 million funding request uh, that the committee had come forward with. So so at Octo the October 7th special town meeting, everyone's going to have an opportunity to, to vote on that funding and ultimately vote on the this project advancing or not advancing. We got a uh, Greg Snedeker here, our new assistant town administrator, is just going to introduce himself real quick. <laughs> Hi, yes, I'm Greg Snedeker, and I uh, just wanted to say hello. And uh, this is my fourth day on the job, so um, you know, bear with me. I'm still getting the lay of the land, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting many of you, if not all of you. Uh, my door is open if you'd like to come and say hello. Uh, I I love meeting people. I love being engaged in the community. And I will say, uh, just yeah, I, this is my 11th year on the select board at Gill, and I will say that seeing a project like this, you guys have an amazing opportunity here. I mean, as someone that is coming from a small town where we don't have the kind of community campus that I'm seeing here, uh, when I came in and, and Chris, Christopher showed me around, I mean, it's really impressive. Um, I just want to say how lucky you are and I feel like I'm lucky to be a part of it. So uh, thank you, and I, I you know, hope to get a chance to meet and, and talk with all of you. So, uh, Welcome, Greg. Yeah, we're, we're very glad to have him on board. Uh, any other questions before we wrap up? I know it's, it's uh, a little past 8 now, and we were trying to wrap up around 8 p.m., Certainly, if you do have further questions, you know, I'll, I'll be around for a little bit packing up and happy to chat. Um, this presentation will be up on the website. Uh, and if, again, if for whatever reason you want to come back for more, we do have a second public meeting early October, another opportunity to discuss the project. Likely a, a little bit different information we'll be presenting um, and an opportunity to provide some feedback prior to that October 7th special town meeting when you'll get your chance to really have your voices heard. So thanks for coming out tonight. Really appreciate it, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you, Kieran Riddle. Thank you, Kieran Riddle.